Hello and welcome. I'm Jason Janes, one of the hosts of Raster World TV, with a video about back focus. It's seemingly one of the largest stumbling blocks for beginners and intermediates alike. So let's take a few moments to go over what you'll need to find appropriate back focus and go over some of the tools and hardware you'll need to successfully achieve it. Back focus is really pretty simple once you understand it. It's simply the space that's required from the rear of the imaging train to the sensor. There is a common misconception that everything has 55 millimeters of back focus. That's not always the case. Every telescope, focal reducer, field flattener, and coma corrector require some form of back focus. I only have personally dealt with refractor telescopes, so that's mainly what I'll be referencing. But there are also reflectors, as well as catadioptic scopes, that require considerably longer and shorter back focus measurements. You'll need to base your measurements on your specific setup, but the principles are pretty much the same. These measurements should be clearly displayed in the manufacturer's documentation or listed on their website. Though that's not always the case, and you may have to work through a little bit of trial and error to achieve your desired result. Once you find the back focus measurement you're going for, then we can start doing some math. The measurements that we need to gather are as follows. The camera sensor back focus, additional hardware like a filter wheel or sliders, and any focal reducers or flatteners that you'd be using for your setup. Once we have this, we can then see how much space we need to make up using spacers and shims. There's an important tool that I think a lot of people overlook. We need to find a way to measure and verify back focus, and to do that, you're gonna need a good digital caliper. They're not very expensive. I got this one online for about $30, and you can find them at most hardware stores. Just make sure it's decent quality, has good reviews, and uses commonly available batteries. As you troubleshoot, it'll be very critical to verify measurements as you make adjustments. Now that we've compiled the hardware measurements, we need to find the remaining space to fill to achieve proper back focus. We will do this with extension tubes like these. I purchased this set online that has 5, 10, 20, and 30 millimeter tubes. Typically your camera will have shipped with a set, but if you use other items in your imaging train, then you'll more than likely need additional tubes. So having a set with various sizes will allow you that flexibility. Next, you'll need a good set of shims. My ZWO cameras came with a set of poly ones, but I found those to not be perfectly uniform, so I ordered a set of blue fireball shims that are made of metal. This particular set comes as a 10-piece assortment that are M48, and also come in M42 and M54 as well. These shims go from 0.1 to 1 millimeter, allowing for easy combinations to help you achieve that final bit of spacing that you're gonna need. So now that we have this, how do we get to our number? Well, since I already have this scope on loan from Explore Scientific and it's already set up, we're gonna use this for our demonstration. They were kind enough to also include their FFFR, Field Flattener and 0.7 Focal Reducer. The FFFR comes with an adapter plate that directly mounts to the dedicated Astro camera using M42 threads. The measurement required for this setup happens to be 55 millimeters according to the FFR documentation online. So let's take a quick look at a visual as I run through these measurements. We have 17.5 millimeters for the camera, 17.5 millimeters for the filter slider, one millimeter of shims, 10 millimeter extension tube, another one millimeter of shim, the five millimeter step down ring, and the FFR camera adapter adds the final three millimeters we needed, giving us a total of 55 millimeters of back focus that is correct for this setup. Now that we have this assembled, let me take a moment to caution you that not all assemblies are always this straightforward. I had a field flattener, I won't name any names, that was laser engraved with 55 millimeters on the rim of the flattener. One would assume that that was correct as the info was also supported on the manufacturer's website. I set the back focus spacing to 55 millimeters and I was seeing distortion throughout my field. I worked through the limited accessories that I had on hand, seeing as I was a beginner at the time and I didn't have the piles of spare parts that I do now. No matter what I did, I couldn't get round stars evenly through the entire field. So I turned to the trusty internet to do some research and talk to some people on different forums and Facebook groups for guidance. The consensus seemed to be that I needed different back focus spacing, thus requiring different extension tubes and some shims. After ordering the additional parts and waiting days for the shipments to arrive, I reconfigured my setup and I was not any closer to round stars with that flattener. I ended up giving up on that flattener and returning it and just use the scope as is while seeking an alternative field flattener solution. The moral of the story is, even if it's printed, it may not be 100% accurate. You may have to spend hours chasing this issue till you get the perfect combination. The good news is, once you get it, unless you're changing out your equipment often, 
you'll be set for many nights of successful imaging. So how do you know that you have it set right, you ask? Well, earlier I mentioned that I was not able to get round stars evenly throughout my field of optics. I know that might be a little confusing for some, so let me show you an example from Altair Astro to help you determine if you are too close or too far. As you can see here, if the back focus is too close, you'll get stars that start in the center and pull outwards toward the edges, kind of like they're pulling away. If you see a bit of spinning or spiral effect radiating from the center of the image, then you're too far away. This visual is exaggerated, but it drives the point home. As you get closer to the correct back focus, the distortion will be less pronounced. So you're going to have to zoom in and pixel peep to check things out. If you're not using a field flattener or reducer, and you're seeing issues in the corners, it may not be back focus issues. That will likely be coma or distortion in the optics, and this is inherent in most all optics, no matter what type of scope you have. This is fixed by using the flattener, reducer, or coma corrector. I really hope that this helps you understand back focus a little bit better and that you can enjoy the night sky. If you like this video and would like to see more, please subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we post new content. And make sure you join us every week on our live show here on YouTube every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Keep imaging. Keep imaging. Keep educating. Keep educating. And clear skies. And clear skies. We'll Let's see you next time, next time on, on Astro, Astro World TV. TV. I love you, big girl. Love you, daddy.